Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So today I am using the gel plate and I am making a sort of abstract type picture. I'm basically having fun and relaxing today and using my Tartan Teddy picture as inspiration. A link the video in the description and um obviously the art whisperer i feel i've neglected this style of art on the gel plate recently and it's actually something that gives me a lot of joy so i thought i am going to sit back and have fun and just get out the paints the posca pens anything else and make some marks in the jelly plate and if I get a picture, I get a picture. Kind of hoping I got a picture, to be honest. <laughs> so, like I said, I'm taking inspiration from the Art Whisperer. And um, he very much uses simple shapes from his handmade stencils. He does line work with the pens. And he likes very graphic, abstract images. And so that's that's the goal of today is to, um, you know, to have a really strong image. And I do think I achieved that. So today I am using Posca pens, acrylic paint, silicon wedge, colour shapers, the brayer. And I think that's it. This white Posca pen, I should have let the black dry. I am very impatient and I destroy all my white Posca pens by going over colours that are not dry yet. Um, but it gives a nice grey. Stark white is overrated. So the large black permanent marker is a pen I'm very fond of on the gel plate. I think it gives real intensity and when the other colours come over the top, it helps maintain contrast. I also like how yellow behaves on top of this black permanent marker because it brings out a lot of green shades. So the techniques I'm using today is very much this pen work at the beginning and then I'm going to layer with different acrylic paints using handmade stencils. Now these stencils are actually made from Mylar, which I purchased and I regret because it's not as easy to cut as acetate. And to be honest, I'm perfectly happy using um, plastic stationery folders, just like the Art Whisperer does. The Art Whisperer his name is Fulton, but I feel I should give him his proper title on YouTube. <laughs> He'll always be Mr. Art Whisperer <laughs> to me. So I use the purple, yellow and red Posca pens and I am choosing paint colours that go with them. So I have chosen cadmium lemon yellow, which is almost like a fluorescent yellow. And I love how it behaves over this black marker. You can see it already starting to take on a green hue. I've used a very dark purple paint that will, I will use sparingly. But then I've also, for the red, I have used a raw sienna. Because I want to bring in some sort of neutral, natural colours as well. Because this will contrast with these more vibrant colours and it will actually make them seem more vibrant because we have the sort of neutral with the extreme. And the purple colour is Windsor Violet. So the paper I'm going to use to pull this on is 160 GSM mixed media paper. This is a strong paper that can handle thicker layers of paint and repeated layers 
of thicker paint. Whereas some of your, um, you know, like your rice papers, your sketchbook papers, your tissue papers, even your printed papers, you, you cannot repeatedly pull thick layers on them. Whereas the mixed media paper is, is built for that. So here I am trying to use the purple sparingly. On the top left corner, that yellow has dried, which unfortunately um, means that it didn't go on to the paper. But that's okay, we just work with it. And I actually think the areas of white um, with the raggedy edges that have been left on the paper actually enhance how it looks just now because we've got some white space left to work with. Now here I am using some raw sienna and some lemon cadmium yellow patches of it because the idea is, is to help some of that paint come back off the plate onto the paper but also to just give a bit more depth to the colours. So I have kind of bigger areas of the yellow and the raw sienna. The purple is quite a dominant colour, so I'm not adding that in again. But I'm hoping that the patches of the raw sienna and the cadmium lemon yellow will just add more depth overall. I'm also using a colour shaper to apply the paints because I want more control over where the paints are positioned on the gel plate. Now, after I've applied this yellow colour, I will go over it lightly with the brayer and that's just to help fill in the sort of gaps but also to give a bit of variety in the thickness of the paint so that when it's on the page, some some areas will be lighter than others rather than just being patches in places. Part of me thinks that I should have left the picture as it was there, especially when I reach a point where I think, oh, I've ruined it, but I'd kept working with it. So you can see that the colours are less separated now. Now I'm using matte medium here, a kind of glue, to see if that will help pull those last bits off the gel plate. And to be honest, it didn't make much of a difference. I'm also putting the gel plate on top of the paper because... I didn't use a registration plate or do anything to mark on the paper where that it should be placed. Um, somebody recently suggested putting like masking tape or painter's tape around the borders of the paper, which would have actually been very helpful here. But obviously I did not do that. <laughs> So these are some of my handmade stencils. They're just wibbly, wobbly, simple shapes. So I've basically used like circle shapes and horseshoe shapes, but cut them in a wibbly, wobbly way. Wibbly, wobbly is a technical art term. I'm sure there must be a, there must be a technical term for that, but I'm choosing wibbly, wobbly. So I liked it here. I think that adding those shapes in with the white did make a difference. So when I did the Tartan Teddy video, it, I put some metallic paint over the top. And so I do that here as well. These are all the little bits I cut out of the centre of the stencils. And I thought, right, don't do stripes again because we did that last time. And we don't want to just keep repeating the same process. And I also thought, well, I'd done some red by using copper. Um, 
So put the little stencils down and recently in the pound shop I had purchased cake decorating tools to use on the gel plate and I use one of them next as well. There it is. It's very big. Two for a pound. So this ends up more pink than red, as you can see there. So I decide to use bronze. We're very much in the... I think this picture was good and it has the potential to be very good. We're in that stage. So I thought I'll add in some bronze... I did some stripes and unfortunately this then muted the whole picture back and it was lost. So we go back to the white. You can see it there, there's just not enough definition anymore. However, when I add the white in, and I'm also using the same sh shaped stencils, so there is that visual language being continued in each layer of the picture. I should also add in that I cut the edges off this page, this picture, because it actually, the composition was much stronger when I had the, sh the shapes coming out of the end of the picture rather than having a pink border surrounding them. This is my favourite thing about the Art Whisperer is when he takes the stencils off his gel plate and it's got that lovely contrast with the paint. So this is the final layer and I just think the white paint, everything that was lost in that picture, the white paint brings it back. So all of a sudden these shapes, the colours have definition again within the shapes. So this is white fluid paint that I'm using to make the white area more solid. Now, I am not completely filling it in. I'm just filling in the more patchy areas. And you could do this with the normal heavy body white paint. I just chose the fluid paint because it's a bit more transparent and it spreads easier. And it meant there was less work for me to do here. I'm using a hog bristle brush, um, which is quite stiff and rough, but because there's quite a few layers on here, it moves over them very easily. So, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.